Vaseline. You were at OCAD with Will uh -huh. and Louis in 95? 95, 95 96. And you drifted away from OCAD, uh -huh. 95, and then Vaseline started happening. I read Richard Vaughn's essay, 2000 was when he put it. I can't remember, 99 or 2000, but yeah. So had you, were you hanging out with those guys in between there? No, um, well I'd always kept contact with Will. Um, he used to come by the video store I worked at, and we, 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 well, we related that we weren't getting, um, represented or had venues to go to. Something to do. And Buddies had an alternative gay night in the mid-90s, and that had started to dwindle and die, so there was, um, there was a real need for something that wasn't circuit party dance music for gay, queer, lesbian. Also, we wanted a less male-centric, something that's more inclusive of all genders and, and tr but we just used to bitch and sit around and bitch and go, there's nowhere to go and blah, blah. but he actually started uh, to do these nights, which was at the Elmo, which I thought not, it's usually very centered around the village at that time. And the first one was just um, a very almost, it was just a group of people that, um, for the most part, I saw a lot of faces that I knew already, so it was a little collective of people. It started to just really burgeon and grow and word of mouth. That was before a lot of social media, too, like, like internet. But, yeah. Well, email was going on, but it didn't have, like, Facebook or Twitter. It was more just word of mouth. It was like, actually oh, I went to this night, and it's really great, and I like the music, and you should, too. And it grew and grew and grew. So... That From was, yeah, Elma Combo, and then it was went to um, Lee's Palace. Lee's Palace. I, I, I worked. Um, I did go over dancing and uh, I worked the door for a couple of shame events. Um, but no, I wasn't performing in drag. I was. Go but dancing. the impression I got is like everybody was performing. Yeah, but I wasn't genocide. I wasn't performing. Well, yeah, like part of a scene, part of okay. a tapestry, part of. And then that went till 2006. So when was the first like genocide performance? Uh, Gaza Strip, uh, September of 2000. I did a performance of the fruit, the the anniversary of 9/11. I explored costume and gender, and um, through punk and, and goth, I dressed very extremely gender fucking goth. So it was almost more of a re retelling and recelebration of that of aesthetics and dress up and. I also noticed that in club culture, people weren't dressing up as much as they used to be, so putting an effort into the theatrics and okay. of like the new wave, like Blitz Club. Um. So where all were you performing? 2008, so there was um, Gaza Strip. Where else were you performing? G Gaza Strip, I'd done a couple of venues like around the village, which wasn't well received because of uh, I've done Woody's and I've done The Barn and it wasn't well received because I was referencing or, or mm -hmm. Lena Lovitch or Nina Hagen or, or those that it wasn't anything palatable to mainstream Buddies, Buddies and received, uh, Big I did, At The Beaver I did uh, Goth Drag which um, in January was the first Goth Drag so there was already a queer alternative sensibility that was more received well, we're, has it, they're going to be moving the Goth Drag Night to the Augusta House. So that's... The skeleton um, was looked at as disease. As yeah, yeah. So you had to... Marky Mark. That Marky Mark ideal was, was I think, the pinnacle of 90s gay male culture. was buff, steroid, so circuit, There juice. was no play in any of it. It was like male or female. There wasn't, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, it was buff or... Waste. It wasn't anything in between. So. And then, see, I see vastly like the thing that happened there was a Smash big eruption Smash that down. of what is beautiful, what is erotic, what is yeah. It, but it was like a big eruption then of the play and gender play of the play. Gender play was allowed to wigs, costumes, lipstick, eyeshadow, glitter, a reversion to glam rock, almost the Bowie. The, the T-Rex, yes, so 
Okay, I didn't have the connection with glam rock. But glam that, rock was, yeah, yeah, there was a real resurgence to that. Okay, okay. And then it went into more like Klasnomi and... So how are we doing now? I mean, I've been hibernating a lot in the winter, but I mean, how do you feel about, it? is it anywhere right now? It's uh, such a, a blender way? of everything, right? What I talked about earlier, everything and nothing. There's almost too much to choose from that. Um, but still, I don't think there's a lot of edge. There's some edge that's happening, but things seem to be quite safe right now. There seems to be like almost people wanting to pull back and not push boundaries. Maybe uh, a lot of boundaries were pushed in the 80s, but there needs to be, especially more concerned, like political changes, things that are going on. There's a lot to say right now, and I don't think people are saying. It's working for and against itself. Um, people also, though, through more accessibility to Twitter, Facebook, uh, constant handheld devices, are also not noticing the changes that are going on around. They're more focused in their own little universe that's not real, it's not real connection on what's actually going on. What's happening on the street around you than what's coming up on a screen. Yeah, so it's a distraction all the time. There was a man that collapsed on a streetcar a couple of weeks ago and everyone was more upset that they were going to miss work and they were on their handheld more than they were concerned about how that man's house was doing. And that spoke volumes to me about the state of the world. Or social social um Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you.